And here are five more points that I believe usher us into our greatest destiny. Number six, pray big prayers that you know only God could fulfill. Ephesians 3.20 says that God's plans are above and beyond all we could ask or dream. Psalms 84.11 says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield, the Lord bestows favor and honor and no good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. You can trust him for that. Psalms 85 12 says the Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Number seven. Trust that promotion and demotion are from the Lord. God alone will put you in the place of influence that is yours. No man can be against you if God is for you. We can put away our business cards and not worry so much about promoting ourselves. God has the full ability to get you to where you need to be. In fact, as I look back, it was mainly by seeming coincidence or the mouth of others that I was given unprecedented opportunities to serve God in capacities I did not see coming. Honor this scripture in the words of David, Psalm 75, verse 5. Lift not up your horn on high. That means don't brag about yourself. Speak not with a stiff neck. Don't be arrogant. Verse 6 says, for promotion comes neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and he sets up another. Number eight, the word of God says, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. But that does not mean relying on education and worldly astuteness. The most brilliant being in the universe is God, and he will work through the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. When Peter preached in the New Testament, they marveled at how this unlearned fisherman spoke with the authority of a mighty man. God has given you the wisdom that you need, which is far more pivotal than knowledge from a book. Proverbs 3, 7 says, Don't trust in your own wisdom, but fear and respect the Lord and stay away from evil. And number nine, stir up the gift by the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy 1, 6 says, For this reason I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God. Don't get bored with it. That is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and discipline. Be powerful, be loving, be full of discipline. Study to show yourself approved. Let God work powerfully in your life. And number 10, walk in the anointing of God alone. For the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon you. What are you anointed to do? I love the people that are anointed to do simple things, even like cleaning a building. If God has called you to it, do it with God's power and his anointing. Never before have we had such unprecedented opportunity, women, to make a difference in our world. Women like Golda Meir came up against much opposition that we might not encounter now. And yet she was a pillar of strength, standing up for her convictions, her convictions with incredible courage. Much like Deborah in the Bible, she rose to achieve that which many did not think was culturally acceptable. Deborah was the only woman judge in the Bible and she would give advice to great commanders like Barak when God would speak to her about going to war and taking territory. Another woman, J.L., seemed insignificant and yet she brought peace to Israel for 40 years. Stay near to the presence of God. In Joshua 3, 3 and 4, and I will end with this. Joshua was about to take the promised land. And the word of God says that, that he was told, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and you are to move out from your positions and follow it alone, and then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. You see, the ark represents the presence of God. When we keep our eyes on his presence, when we move, when he says to move, and when we follow only him, he will show us the way to go because we have not been this way before, women. This is the truth behind my journey. I follow the presence 
and he is trustworthy. So we press into our destinies, a new season, a new power, fresh strength, innovative vision, renewed hope to press on more intensely than ever before. We pray for outstanding, unprecedented support from heaven. I pray that for you, for Philippians 3.12 straining toward the goal. Not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Praise God. Because we are his, may the Holy Spirit put us in strategically, humanly incalculable positions of influence that will leave us awestruck at his detailed architecture of our destinies. I'm praying for doors to open wide for you that previously seemed blocked from the other side. I'm declaring the removal of barriers that have plagued the path for decades to now be swallowed up with ease, releasing a powerful wind of inexplicable favor from the Lord. What God has prepared for us, even in the disparity of the dark trial of our souls, will now unleash a harvest of greater proportion than we could have ever anticipated. May it overflow our capacity to manage and the abundance of it be great. May it leave us breathless. Women of God, you are called to awesome places. Rise up.